Folks, we have all suffered through one terrible meta or another. A meta is how a game is played at the highest competitive level, when players pick the best strategies and pit them against each other. The meta is supposed to be balanced, but sometimes things slip through the cracks. Whether it's a broken item or an insanely overpowered character, something goes wrong and turns a good meta into a broken one. So today, we wanted to run down the worst metas we've ever seen. Here are the top 10 most broken metas in esports history. Kicking off our list is CSGO's most recent shitty meta, the Reign of the Krieg. And the Krieg, just so strong, oh my word. Maybe too strong, Harry. That is unbelievable from Golden. What a round. For months in 2018 and 2019, CSGO players were terrorized by the AUG. But as soon as Valve fixed that problem, they created another and gave rise to the Krieg meta. Another one versus two, reloading. He spots the shoulder and he doesn't bail out of the fight. Bates out the shot, Zipnix commits, he's got the headshot and he's got it! Through the smoke, no idea! By November 2019, it was the most popular weapon in pro play, even after Valve jacked up the price again. Golden having to do it all from the back of the site will shut down absolutely everybody! Oh. The Golden what? Boy up Fnatic rises once again! It had 100% armor penetration, a high rate of fire, a scope, it was relatively cheap, had great range, and insane first shot accuracy. Simply put, it outclassed every other gun in the game. At a point where you are two rounds away from victory. <gasps> well, maybe it doesn't no. matter. Mayan showing his prowess, the taps with the Krieg. Oh. He's looking for one of the most brutal aces that we've seen in recent memory. Oh. That looks so easy, 20 for 16. Oh my God, the nerf is coming, boys. Eventually, community outrage got the Krieg nerfed in April 2020, putting an end to one of CSGO's most frustrating eras. Number nine on our list is a meta that turns Street Fighter into Sleep Fighter. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, what defense! He says he's here to play. Wow! Wow, really? He committed to the level really? three focus attack, and he's gonna get the healing. That's the demoralizer. With the release of Ultra Street Fighter 4 came Elena, a capoeira fighter with an ultra that could heal her after she took enough damage to build it up. Where's my number one? Right here, the boo. Elena. Obviously, everyone hates this character. With Elena in the mix, matches could last forever. She had a simple loop. Play defensively, take a bit of damage, and heal right back up, usually taking the life lead. If you took any damage, awesome. That just meant you were closer to healing again. Oh, not expecting that wake up, but again, the healing already going wow. with Venice. What a counter and punch. Ultra two. Two. It's not going to be enough. And now the healing fully stocked, and he's going right at it. And only a scan strong wow. punish. And he has the life lead now with that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. He got up to the last minute. And, and he complete. goes for a simple combo. Another mental break. It was incredibly frustrating to play against, and many saw it as extremely boring to watch. Coming in at number eight is one of the shortest but most frustrating metas in CSGO history, the release of the R8 Revolver. You can one-shot somebody with a fucking pistol! Why is that allowed? The R8 was incredibly overpowered when it was added to the game in the 2015 Winter Update. It was cheap and could one-shot a player at close range with a body shot. It was a pocket nuke, and for just a couple of days, it straight up broke the game. I can, I can oh yeah, it one-shots in the stomach! Yeah, this is going to be so insanely fucking overpowered. Oh, oh Coland! 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 <laughs> what the fuck? This guy! This meta may not have lasted as long as some of our other entries, but it was so unbearably frustrating that CSGO fans will never forget it. Taking the number seven spot on our list is the meta that devastated Worlds 2017, the Ardent Sensor meta. Everybody's just on the race to Ardent Sensor because first support to get Ardent Sensor, if you can get an entire back before the other support, then that can turn into a tower, a dragon, you know, and, and first rotation. During Season 7, Riot decided that they wanted to make Ardent Sensor a more viable support item. And by Worlds, it was definitely more viable. Targets that were healed or shielded by an Ardent support got bonus attack speed, on-hit magic damage, and on-hit healing. Lots of it. Thank you, 
Harden Sensor led to long, drawn-out defensive games and boring support picks that brainlessly spammed buffs on their AD carry. Monster is hungry. Nine stacks, no champions, and he's looking for some dinner. Three to three here. Team WE, Feather Storm start from Mystic. Cosmic Radiance goes down. It's going to get just a few of the members. She yays on the backside, unprotected, and that may be the focus. Monster hits him. The entire team collapses. She yays down. Ben tries to run out here. Mystic on the top side. Beautiful damage coming in from him. The focus is perfect. Sends Garen low. Biofrost goes in for another attack. Feather Storm the resets. Back, but Double Lip has found the resets, and he says, Here we go, team. SM. Riot may have nerfed it after that world, but it was still one of the slowest metas the game has ever seen during its most important tournament of the year. StarCraft II is a game about strategy and game sense, macro and micro. But what happens when you throw all that away and instead resort to one simple comp? Well, you get the number six entry on our list, the Broodlord Infester meta. Uh, well, parting and losing this base, that's oh it. Oh my god! I can't even... Oh my god! Well, sorry guys that we called that off. What? Uh, normally when you're on two base with Zerg against a three base Protoss that has better upgrades and more tech, normally that doesn't go well, but... The main culprit here was the Infester's fungal growth, which, when paired with Broodlings, could easily wipe out many of the most common units in the game. And he's doing a great job. Look at how many Infestors are here. Wow, the Claws are doing so well against those Roaches. Yeah, and he wants to get these Broodlords being micro back very well. Great fungals going up by Yu-Gi-Oh! And look at this! This destroyed StarCraft's balance, because there was only ever one correct way to play. Make Broodlords and Infestors. Will he be able to break through? The Corruptors are nowhere to be seen. It now it did come out. It's really scary. All those investors, they have too much energy, and now suddenly the Spine Burst can't even attack the Colossi. Yeah, he lost those Archons. He now he won. tries to blink around, and he gets fungled. The this could be the end of this game. The Stalkers are getting eliminated here. He's got to kill off this last uh, Colossus, though, and he does. And so those Zerg What the hell effective. is happening here? This is actually... Jesus, man. I, I tell you, parting really thought he was going to win, guys. Like Somehow, Riot keeps breaking their game just in time for Worlds. The Juggernaut patch is probably the most broken pro meta in League history, and that's why it's coming in at number 5 on our list. Sneaky is out, there's a turret alive, though. they got to be careful. A big knockback, and that's the kill into Morgana. Azir goes down as well, but the Tugs are coming through. A double kill for Boss, a triple kill for that's Boss. Nice. Holy cow, the Going into Worlds 2015, Riot decided a couple of champions were juggernauts now, and just gave them insane overpowered buffs. Darius, Gangplank, and Mordekaiser were hilariously broken, with Gangplank even sporting an unheard of 100% pick ban and win rate. Kjartan steals the kill away, as is his right as the Mordekaiser player. Big engage from Kissing, knocks up three, and the Dragon is still chasing the enemy AD carry. Lloyd's got to be careful, and oh, down they the go, a value. double kill. The Dragon value is big on this one, all is well. There's a triple kill, they're going for four. Rai cleaned things up after Worlds and apologized for implementing such drastic changes before a major event, but no one will ever forget the mess that was a juggernaut meta on the game's biggest stage. Here's the battle. Karsa alone in front, absorbing, gets dunked. So as is online. So as Maple's down. He's still going. He doesn't get the third. It's Azonius comes across. He gets some damage on the stake. He He's on the NL. And it's going to save the game. So as gets a pentakill after Baron. Number four on our list is a time when all you ever heard in every Dota 2 match was this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we're talking about the Ho Ho Ha Ha meta. Sniper's Shrapnel got buffed in patch 6.83, and after that, his infamous voice line haunted Dota players everywhere. Now they're oh. gonna jump in. Axe calls, Ziz in trouble. Hexed up, goodbye. Gotta buy that. Haunt comes in. Mike gets blown up by Swindle. Sleazel going right on his Z freak. Pops the Ghost Scepter, stays alive. Another Shrapnel goes. They're holding four versus five. What Complexity. the hell? Sniper had a brain dead kit to begin with, and his new buffs allowed him to turn Dota 2 into another game entirely. He's walking right in. He'll pop the Manta style, gets hexed up, get ahead to the trees. Earthspike connects, still in there. Now the blink call. Mike turning it around. Sleasel does end up falling. He doesn't have buyback. Ziz now in trouble as well. 
And there's no buybacks for Wheel. Nobody has buyback. Relic's up at 11. Swindle gets a triple kill. To make matters worse, Troll Warlord was also stupidly overtuned, turning him into a raid boss who mini stunned his enemies into oblivion. Sniper for Relic and Sleasel, his Troll Warlord. It's not Dota with one or both of these heroes. Black has to retreat back into the base. Pylite Eye, not gonna make it this time. He goes down. And a big heal flies out. Sleasel barely alive on his troll. Moving forward and repelled. He could get black. They call GG. It's over. 25 minutes. Thankfully, Ice Frog stepped in to save us from the hell that Dota had become. But it took him months to fix things. Meaning that that terrible laugh still echoes in Dota players' minds to this day. Number three on our list is Lion's debut in Rainbow Six Siege. Which introduced a meta that almost destroyed the game as we knew it. Raphael using the Smoke and Candela combo. He's just going to push right in. They'll have some covering fire as the Artillery of Glass stands in bathroom. And look at that, Raphael. They will just bully them. Vitality sweeps into the site. When Lion was first released, his gadget, the EE-1D, allowed him to scan defenders through walls, revealing their location. It gave players a stupidly easy counter to pre- and post-plant rotations. Drones on And... Get your ass back here. <laughs> gotcha. The game-breaking info that Lion provided to his team left the game in a disastrous state, and he tore high-level Siege apart for months. BC will get BC4 uneasily, giving only Brian alive. NVK testing his control key. And, uh, well, that could get taken out there. When Season 9 rolled around, Ubisoft announced that Line was banned from pro play, while they reworked him into something less broken, finally bringing an end to one of Siege's most infamous eras. The runner-up spot on our list goes to the meta that broke Overwatch. Goats. Chat, I cannot imagine what it's like to be a pro player right now. Chat, 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 I want you to think of this, okay? People and pro players scrim this meta probably six to eight hours a day. It all started just after Brigida was released, when an NA Open Division team named Goats realized that playing three tanks and three supports could basically win any game. Drew has now fallen, and it's gonna be point A going on over, and now they're gonna get all these staggered kills as they're hunting them down. This is just all going downhill for Karasuno, and Goat will be able to capture it with 6 minutes and 29 seconds left on the clock. That was a massacre. Eventually, the comp made its way into the Overwatch League, which is when Blizzard started to get a real idea of how much the community hated this meta. We do see the Outlaws are going to pull out Dante's Tracer. This has been some, some of the things that Outlaws fans have been waiting for is a good Tracer player on Houston. It's Jake on the far. This combo's worked well for them before, but as soon as they see the defensive setup, they will just simply swap it away. Crucial time lost here for the Outlaws. Well, you know... You want your team to win, right? They're gonna have to play what's meta. Viewership declined while numerous patches tried and failed to kill it, including an entire character designed to counter it. But worst of all, the most popular role in the game, damage, was hardly being played for over a year. Hey, uh, you guys wanna go goats? Wait, is this your first Rally game? to me! Eventually, Blizzard threw in the towel, and at the cost of pretty much all creativity and hero picks, they introduced 222 Rollock, changing how we play Overwatch forever. The worst meta in esports history goes to the character that single handedly killed her own game Smash 4's Bayonetta. And there's still plenty of time on the clock. Make them come to you. Put the screws to. Oh, oh my no. lord! This is this out oh my god! god. After some brief excitement for her release, it didn't take long for the Smash community to realize just how broken she was. Oh, the one more stock chant is out. I never chant that against a Bayonetta player yeah. because you just see that get turned on your head. Oh Punch my attack. gosh. Uh oh! oh. No oh, way! It goes! And Salem! No way, dude. With extremely fast movement, a strong recovery, and a one-touch kill combo from anywhere on screen, Bayonetta had almost no weaknesses. Even after she got nerfed, there was no stopping her torment. <laughs> I'll give you credit. Oh! oh. oh. That's it! He's oh dead. My God. Holy Christ! <laughs> Oh, take that, Ethan! Oh no! Take that, Ethan! Oh, oh, no, no way! No way! 
It got so bad that the community not only hated the character, but started hating the people who played her, too. Unfortunate for him, what a catch from Captain Zack! Oh. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa. Oh! <laughs> oh! That's, look, if you're gonna be the villain, you might as well play the part, bro. In the end, the only thing that could stop Bayonetta was an entirely new game. But we'll never forget her reign of terror in Smash 4. What is going on? What is this? I don't know. I was stalling for time. All right, man. Well, now I really understand why this is the last Evo. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> last Evo from Smash 4. I mean, now you really get it. <laughs> All right, folks, that's our list. Those are the worst metas of all time. But hey, if there's a meta that you think we missed, something you're still salty about, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to sub to the channel. And hey, this is the new meta, but you've got to follow us on Twitch now too. You never want to miss one of our live streams. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. What's the worst meta you've ever experienced, Brendan? Oh, something that was really bad for like people of my rank is double shields. I feel like the worst meta I've ever experienced that's not on this list is Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition Era Yun. He has a punch where he leaps halfway across the screen and punches you in the face. And before, if you blocked it, he would be minus, which meant he wasn't allowed to press buttons afterwards. But now he was plus, which means he was allowed to press buttons afterwards. Oh my God. It fucking <laughs> sucked. And the worst part was that Street Fighter 4 had not so great online. And so there would just be these moments sometimes where a Yun would just be, would have just spent a bar to teleport in front of your face and there was nothing you could do, like literally nothing you could do about it.